Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're assembling this Weber Spirit natural gas grill. First, inspect the shipping container for any damage, and if you find any damage to the box, you should contact the shipper immediately. Remove the instructions, which should be on the very top. Using a knife or a pair of scissors, you can cut the two plastic straps that hold the contents together for shipping. You can then begin removing the contents from the box, and it really helps if you have a large space like a garage or an area where you can put all of the components out in the open where you can see all the different parts of the grill. It's going to make it a lot easier for assembly later on. And also, make sure you look through all of the cardboard packaging because there could be some smaller parts uh, that you might miss and you don't want to throw anything away. Now it's time to remove the grill unit and set it off to the side. However, here is a little tip I learned too late. There's a lot of parts inside the grill and you should remove those before you lift this out. It'll make it about 40 or 50 pounds lighter. You might notice I'm struggling a little bit to get this out of the box, and that's because I forgot to do that. So here you can see all of the things are inside the grill unit. And even with the grill removed from the box, make sure you check the bottom of the box because there's more parts uh, inside that box once you remove the grill. Here you can see kind of how I have everything laid out in the open so I can go grab what I need during the installation. Now it's a good idea to check all these parts for damage. You'll notice the door that came with mine has a big dent in it. We contacted Weber. They're going to ship out a new door, a replacement, no problem. But you should check all these things before you do assembly. All installation hardware is clearly labeled in separate bags and we'll reference these letters as we go through the assembly. We're going to start by installing the casters onto the bottom of the base unit as shown. You'll notice a small sticker showing a lock. That means the locking casters go at the front of the base unit. The locking casters have a little tab on the front that you can see. Go ahead and use the screws from the A bag and install each one as shown. Make sure you get these screws good and tight. Now we're ready to flip the base unit over and install the right hand upright panel. Now you'll know the right hand panel because it has a small magnet that will face forward. Using the screws from the bag labeled B, go ahead and attach the right hand upright panel. Now you may notice on the very ends the panels don't line up perfectly so you may have to slightly bend those panels in as I'm showing here to get it to line up with the holes but the the metal is flexible enough where you can do this. Repeat the very same steps to install the left hand upright panel. Now we're ready to install the back panel. Make sure the flanges are aimed toward the inside of the unit and that the gas hose opening is at the very bottom right. Use four screws and washers from the bag labeled B to install the back panel. Using four more screws from the bag labeled B, install the rear brace as shown. Attach the drip pan frame using the slot on the side of the left panel and then attach it with two more screws and washers from the bag labeled B. Using two more screws and washers from the bag labeled B, install the front brace as shown. You'll notice a small groove that should be on the right hand side facing forward. Only attach the two screws at the bottom. On the rear of the grill unit, you'll notice two cotter keys and cotter pins that act as a hinge. We need to remove these so that we can lift off the lid for the next phase of assembly. Now you can lift off the lid from the grill unit and set it off to the side for now. We're now ready to place the bottom half of the grill unit into the frame. Now there's a couple of things you should probably do. You really should have a couple of people to do this. I did it by myself, but it's easier if you have two people. The second thing, here's a little tip. Go ahead and remove all of this protective wrap uh, before you put the grill in place.
Here's a quick look at how the gas line should be routed uh, after you've set the base in place. Also make sure the igniter wires go behind the front brace as well. Attach the gas line bracket to the right hand panel using a screw from the bag labeled B. Using two more screws from the bag labeled B and using the metal lock washers, attach the lower grill unit to the front brace as shown. Attach the battery holder using the two screws from the bag labeled D as shown. Now we're ready to install the control panel. Make sure that you feed the igniter wires down behind the front brace as shown. Using the three screws from the bag labeled J, install the screws to hold the front control panel in place as shown. Secure the control panel to the front brace using two additional screws and washers from the bag labeled B as shown. Now we're ready to install the stainless steel side trays. You do this by positioning the trays onto the studs that protrude from the sides of the frame and then using the hardware in the bag labeled K go ahead and attach the trays to the frame. Now you'll need a 7 16 inch wrench to tighten these nuts and repeat this process on both sides. I'm only showing you the right side to save time. Next, let's go ahead and connect the igniter wires to the battery box as shown. Insert the two plastic wire retaining clips into the openings on the left side panel. Now after you do this go ahead and tuck the wires inside the clip and it keeps them out of the way and uh, unlikely to be damaged. Unscrew the lid from the battery container and install the double A battery with the positive side facing outward. Install the drip tray as shown with the hole facing to the left and it slides into this little shelf and then put the drip pan underneath inside the frame. Using the hardware found in the bag labeled G, install the door handle. Insert the plastic plugs into the back of the door and then the screws go inside the plugs. Hold the door handle from the front side as you screw in from the back. Insert the plastic hinge pin in the bottom of the base plate and then install the door as shown. Now we're ready to reinstall the lid on top of the grill and reinsert the cotter pins and cotter keys that we removed earlier. Next, set the flavor bars in place as shown. Install the control knobs onto the posts. Lastly, install the grates and the warming rack as shown. You're now ready to connect your new Weber grill to the fuel source and have a great cookout.